Hey, welcome back to the fish pond. Today, we're gonna to talk about feeding fish with plants. All right, let's check it out. All right, so we're gonna do a real short video here, folks, about how to prepare my special delicacy of uh, Brussels sprout leaves for the tilapia, just the way that they like them, with just a few special ingredients here. Nah, I'm kidding, we don't use any of that stuff. Look, <laughs> all you gotta do is blanch them. This is not a cooking video, this is not a cooking channel, but if you're going to feed uh, leaves like this or cabbage or something like that, spinach, to your tilapia, you do want to blanch them first. So throw them in some boiling water for a few minutes, cool them off, to stop the cooking process, and then the fish will be able to eat them. All right. All right. So with those blanched, and if you don't know what blanching is, it's basically just boil them for a few minutes, then run them under some cold water to stop the heating process. With those blanched, they're ready to go in. Um, I just find that if I don't blanch these, the, the fish don't eat them. But after I blanch them, they'll gobble them right up. Um, additionally, I just feel like if you boil them, that's gonna help to sterilize them. If there's any um, microorganisms, bacteria, any kind of life on them from being out in the garden, well, sterilizing them before putting them into the fish pot is probably a good idea so that I don't introduce something I don't want in the pot. Otherwise, once they're blanched, they're ready to go. Now you could, I suppose, take the stem off of here, but what I find is that they will eat most of the stem except for maybe a last few inches of it. And then I'll find that floating in the pond a couple days later, I just take it out and toss it aside. So, there you go. Now they just had dinner, so they're not real hungry. So these will become like a midnight snack and they'll chew on throughout the day tomorrow. They'll probably be gone by tomorrow afternoon. All right, now the water hyacinth over here, this stuff, so these plants, they start out, you see they have this root ball in the center here, and they just keep putting out new branches, and then they'll put out a stem along the side that has, starts to form its own new root ball. Eventually these will separate. Right, and this will become a whole nother plant over here. So when I got these originally, there was just a few of these root balls and then they were really small. They weren't these big old plants like this. Um, I think there was probably four or five of these little root ball things that came when I ordered them. I ordered those off of Amazon. Um, you can also get them on eBay. So if you can't find a nursery or something like that, close to you. Amazon and eBay are always good options. So for these, they love these things, man. If I throw some of those out there, they'll start chewing on them. You'll see them taking that plant and then within a matter of oh, hours, they'll have the whole plant gone. <laughs> the whole thing will be just gone. Uh, so I keep them in this protective barrier. What this is, is basically it's just some pool noodle and some window screen. Let me just bring it in. A Bring it in a little closer here so you can see better. Yeah, this is pool noodle and some window screen. It's just um, tied on there with some wire. I had done before with those smaller ones over there, I had cut down the pool noodles, smaller size. That didn't work as well as leaving them in their whole size. That keeps it, um, well, the other ones, they just started to lose their form. And then they start to sink under the water. Additionally, the fish want to get in there, so they try. Uh, if there's food that's in there, even not just the plants, but if, I, if there's a fish food that goes into them, well, I've found lots of fish caught up inside of these things, and uh, they'll wreak havoc on it. They can injure themselves with the wires that are poking around inside of there. So we don't want that. The bigger pool noodle helps to keep that from happening, um, although I have found some of them in here. Little fish, the little minnows and stuff like that. i got lots of minnows in here. I'll find those in there all the time, but who cares if they're in there? All right, now this stuff here is water lettuce. And um, I haven't experimented too much with feeding them the water lettuce because that's, I'm still trying to get enough of it that I'm happy to go ahead and give some of, to, some of it to them. Although they have gotten access to some of it and they gobbled it right up. They enjoyed that too. Uh, this stuff, when I got it, it was just one plant. I only got one. These ones, like the other plant, it, off of one plant, it starts to shoot out a stem and another one forms over there. Um, 
And so from one plant that came, I've now got, oh, I don't know, what is there? There's probably 50 or 60 of them there. Um, if I include the ones over there and that one, and that far one, maybe we're up to 70, 75 plants now. And that's, this has been, I've had these for maybe a month. The other thing you can use, which I don't have any of currently, is duckweed. Uh, I had duckweed last season and it was awesome. Um, it grew like crazy. It, it, it reproduces really fast, just as fast as these things here, maybe even faster. And the fish love it. I mean, as soon as you put some of it in the water, they're after it. They're, they're attacking these things all the time, trying to get it. So it's probably their favorite of the plants. Um, it didn't survive the winter for me here. And so I guess if you were going to try to continue to have it throughout the winter without having to repurchase it, you could probably keep some indoors or someplace where it's protected. Uh, I also have a natural pond here uh, on the property that duckweed does flow through. And I meant to grab some of that this season and, and start it again in here. Just haven't gotten to it. I just, our pond out here I know has a whole bunch of stuff in it that I don't really want the fish eating. You always have to be kind of conscious when you're introducing something new into the pond that you could be introducing some uh, parasites some bacteria, it's something that you don't want the, uh, the getting into your fish. Um, and so be conscious of that. But what you can do is you can actually give it a bath in some hydrogen peroxide. And that is supposed to uh, actually, you know, kind of sterilize it and get it ready to go in there. Of course, I don't have a microscope that I've looked under to see if that's actually worked. <laughs> um, but that's what I did last with these plants here. and. It doesn't seem like I've created any kind of problem. So I may gather some duckweed out of the back pond and do that with it and try this again here. But you can always, like I said, buy these things on Amazon or eBay. I've gotten duckweed from there. Just know that when they come, they're gonna stink, right? And people complain a lot in the reviews about those things. Man, they're, they're pond water that's been sitting enclosed in a capsule for several days and maybe even in the heat. Um, it's gonna stink when you open it up. The smell goes away. All right, that's just natural. So don't be, don't be alarmed when you see that. Uh, anyways, other than that, I've used um, pak choy before as well. Uh, you could probably use, uh, I'm gonna try using sweet potato vine and see how they like that. There's probably tons of greens that you can use, spinach and whatnot. Uh, so don't be afraid to try some things out. Maybe do some research if you're concerned about it. Um, if it's good for humans, it's probably okay for them too. Some plants are gonna have a, a high protein content, which is what your fish need, and some are not. And so obviously, if you are gonna try to use a lot of plants for their food, then make sure that they're getting enough protein. Uh, that's probably about all I've got at this time that I can say about feeding the plants. And uh, I thank you for watching. If you have any questions about it, any comments, any other tips or advice that you think I could uh, benefit from knowing, and also the other viewers, then please drop them down below. And I thank you so much. Have a great day.